Hey everybody, I got this spaceship building prototype thing and it's time for me to give the player control over the ship. So I gave him control. The throttle, just that so far. I wanted to go over how I did this because it's very valuable. It's a great way to do it if you need to do tutorials or events or scripts or mods or anything like that. So how did I do it? Why is it important? Well, normally when you want to control a ship or a person or whatever, you want to give players control over it, you put that in the update function, and that's just what I've done. If the ship is locally controlled, then check the mouse scroll wheel, and if the mouse scroll wheel has changed, then, ch then change the throttle percent. That's very basic, right? works the same way regardless of everything. You can use you know, horizontal and vertical axes. This is a very, very standard control system. And then up here in throttle percent, I actually have a setter that makes sure it doesn't go below zero or above one, and that also sets the speed. This is temporary, just because I haven't actually finished implementing engines yet. And it goes on throttle change.invoke. Now, why is that important? Well, the ship kind of just tends to itself. The ship doesn't care whether the player knows what's going on or not. It just responds to the player's inputs. And we need to have some visual, like this guy over here, that tells the player what's actually going on right now. The thing is that most people who are just starting out would tend to embed that inside of this ship. So instead of calling an event, they would instead say something like uh, uh, throttle slider dot value equals uh, throttle percent, right? That would be a common way to do it, and then you'd have to drag and drop the throttle percent into the into the sh uh, the throttle slider into the ship. That's not a very good way to do it because if the display and data classes are too tightly interwoven, then you won't be able to change either one of them without damaging the other. For example, I want two of these ships. If I had coded it by hard coding the slider. Well, guess what? Now I have two ships vying for control of that slider, and you have no way of knowing which ship is actually displaying on that slider. And that gets more and more complex as you get more and more controls and events, and it just gets out of control. So instead, you want to have a very flexible system where your data and your UI are not tightly bound together, and you only sign up for the data you need. So that's why you use events. Now, in the past, I relied very heavily on C-sharp events. And there are a couple of reasons for that, and they're all invalid now. Because now you can use Unity events. So, let me show you what I mean. This throws out an on-throttle change. See? So, when the throttle changes, I can just call that. On-throttle change dot invoke throttle percent. The player HUD is responsible for signing up for that on throttle change. Okay? No biggie. Everything's easy. The player hood understands what ship it cares about. If you have eight other ships in the game, who cares? And you can program in something where, you know, if the player flies over to another ship and sits down in the control seat, it just switches, the player hood just switches what, what it's in control of. Uh, and you can do like names and post names on the HUD or whatever you need. Uh, and it just signs up for the events that it needs. You might be thinking, well, why don't you bind them more tightly? Well, what happens when I want to change this down the line? I'll be able to swap out this UI for a completely different UI without any impact on any of the legacy code at all. Um, I could create 20 different UIs. I could have every player have their own HUD. I could have every player able to program their own HUD as a mod if they wanted to. It's all okay because it's completely decoupled. All it cares about is the messages passing back and forth, the events. Now, obviously, on throttle change is a pretty basic one. There are a lot of other events, like on damage or on power change or any number of other, other events, which I haven't implemented. Why is this important? Why does it matter? Well, imagine that you came into this setting and you're like, okay, I want to create a tutorial. And at that point, you're like, oh, shit, tutorials. Oh, my God, this is going to be so hard. No, it's not. It's going to be real easy. Because all you have to do is create a new class that just handles popping stuff up on the screen in a certain order. So you program in your tutorial as a series of, uh, you know, text. So um, 
you just have a class that you know pops up all the messages that you want it to pop up in a certain order and then you're more or less done you don't you don't have to go into any of the complexities of trying to wire it into the scene in code you don't have to be like okay well intercept the players uh, inputs if the players inputs are uh, you know are matched to this then we'll do the next tutorial segment um, okay check the game world state Does the game world change so that you have enough gold to continue that's a mess Instead, what you do is when you're setting up your game, you make sure that all of the events that you're going to need to set up your tutorial are available to you. And then you can just set it up here. So I could say, okay, uh, on throttle change, uh, drop this in, and then I'll drop in my, my, uh, uh, my tutorial class here. And this is my tutorial class. Then I'll select from the drop down list uh, the function uh, throttle, uh, uh, throttle just changed. And it'll pop up the text, yay, you figured out how to change your throttle. Now you should or maybe it'll blow up your engine there's no reason it can't and that can be wired up right here in scene view there's no code necessary so if I wanted to I could have the throttle change blow up my scene view for example bam 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 uh, game object uh, set bool false ah! My engine went away. Otherwise, I, I got rid of the reactor rather than the engine. Whatever, you get the point. Uh, the reactor segment went away. And I didn't have to do any coding for that. All I had to do was make sure that the events I needed were exposed to the inspector so that anyone who wants to build a level can come in here and build a level with those kinds of events. Moreover, a modder can build a complicated ship that does things that are way outside of the range of what you might allow and then use Unity's default serializer to turn that into an asset and then you can just have an asset importer. So I could have this ship with its exploding reactor uh, as an asset that can be exported to any number of players uh, or included in any level we please. There's no difficulties with it. It's super basic, super easy. It makes life so much nicer than using code-only events. But you do have to know how to do it. It's not quite as straightforward as it sounds. Let me show you what I mean. Over here in Spaceship, let's go ahead and just add a new Unity event. Public Unity event on Unity event. And if we select the tutorial as ship, it'll pop up right here. Boom. You're used to this by now, right? Let's go ahead and see whether or not we can tell it to change the slider. Player HUD on trigger. I'll throttle to there it is. Uh, it's asking us to pass it afloat. And this was the big problem with using Unity events. They're zero argument events. I can't invoke that with a 12 or a 0.3 or whatever. I can only invoke it with exactly the number that I'm passing it. So this is useless as an on throttle event because all I can say is my throttle changed, but I can't tell you to how much. <laughs> you have to program every single function to go looking for the values it needs and that's a huge no-no so this is not gonna work what we need to do is have a unity event that allows us to pass a float well that's actually pretty easy all you have to do is tell the unity event to pass a float and it compiles and it works fine except for one small thing it doesn't serialize properly it doesn't show up in the inspector doesn't save properly Ugh. Now, Unity actually does understand how to serialize those and display those, but it doesn't understand that you want it to. And there's no way to tell it down here that you want it to. There's nothing you can put here, as far as I know, that will make that work. So instead, you put it up here. Public class float event descends from Unity event float. That's the magic word. And then you say, by the way, please serialize this. And Unity goes, oh, okay, fine. And now that you've put this line in somewhere, anywhere, doesn't matter what file it's in, just put it in somewhere, you can use it everywhere. Any class can now have a float event. And it doesn't have to be a float. Unity events can take any argument that Unity can serialize. Colors, floats, vectors, strings, uh, even complicated things. So you can go ahead and give it anything you'd like. Um, I haven't managed to break it yet, although I'm sure that it might be possible to. Uh, so you can pass whatever number of, of arguments you want in however way you want to do it. Uh, we could pass the ship class here. And that would allow us to pass the ship when we are changing, and that would allow us to specify which ship had its throttle changed. 
We can do anything we want with this, and Unity will serialize it for us. And then, of course, the events down here, public float event on throttle change and public wah event on wah. The reason I created the wah event is because I wanted to show you that it handles this fine. Colors, vectors, floats, whatever. And uh, it does. There it is. I don't have anything to catch those kinds of weird arguments, but it's right there. And, well, that is the basics. Now, you are probably going to want to have some of this work in code as well. You can see that this is empty. If I hit play, it is, in fact, calling against this this bar, even though it still says it's empty. How is that working? Well, you can add listeners in code, and it's super easy. It's the same exact way you would add listeners to a C-sharp event. Add listener on throttle change, remove listener on throttle change. It couldn't be any easier. So I really wanted to describe this in detail, and I wanted to thank uh, Xiao23 for his help. And uh, if you don't understand what I've done, or if I was unclear, uh, or if you did understand it, or if you have suggestions about it, let me know because this is a pretty new technique and it really should allow you to set up complicated tutorials and mods and scripted events right in your scene view as long as you surface those events, as long as you make sure that on trigger, uh, you know, on, on throttle change and on exploded and on engine turned on and all that stuff is surfaced. Keep in mind, the ship is not affected by any of this. The ship is happy to do whatever it's told to do. The ship increases its throttle, it decreases its throttle, it turns left, it turns right, it explodes, it doesn't explode, whatever. All it does is whatever the default ship does. And then you can attach additional functionality via the events. And if those events happen to affect the ship, then that's fine. As I showed you, you can blow up the ship's reactor when you turn the engines on. It's very straightforward. Uh, so... That's the technique I wanted to show you how to do. I don't think it's complicated enough to require me to upload this line of code, uh, but I'm hoping that I was very clear about how to use it. Let me know below. Thank you.